Vote. Vote, they say. Vote, Babylon says. Both the left and the right, they say, vote, vote, vote. There's a great song by Tribal Seeds which says, what Babylon tries to offer, profit, refuse it. What Babylon, whatever Babylon is promoting, don't do it. <laughs> you know, a good way to think of voting is, uh, you know, think of like um, Geronimo or, you know, think of like some American Indians from, uh, from 150 years ago. So like the name that, like the ones I know is like Geronimo and Sitting Bull and, and those guys, you know, I, that's not a history that I'm great at. Um, <clears throat> imagine, imagine telling those guys why they should vote. <laughs> And they're looking, you know, you're Geronimo, or let's say it's 150 years ago. And at the time, you know, it's, it's between Lincoln or Douglas. And, and we're trying to tell the American Indian why they should vote between a Lincoln or Douglas. <laughs> uh, Richard uh, Davis has it right. He says, vote for the kingdom. Exactly. Vote Yah. And Yah says, I want you to cast lots and the reason i want you to cast lots is because and this is a fact remember this yah knows the hearts of men yah knows their hearts and only yah knows their hearts therefore we need to let yah choose so the the structure of uh, exodus government is where we we within our tribes locally the the largest uh, the largest ruler or the largest uh, leader or the largest judge, he only has a thousand families that he's governing over. That's the size of a battalion in the military. So it's, you know, it's big, but it's not that big. Think of, you know, the numbers of people who somebody like Trump or Rothschild is, is ruling over, you know, millions and hundred, you know, 300 million or whatever the, the population of the U.S. is just some crazy number. Under the, the grassroots bottom-up system of the Bible, the judges at most is a thousand. That's small, small, a thousand. That way, if it's a thousand, like there, there's some pastors of churches that are, they have much bigger congregations than that, you know? But at a thousand, in a thousand, that's like people you can get to know. Think of, uh, you know, like a like your high school or your middle middle school. Think of the number of people that you know in, in you know not in your class. Like in my class, it was like a hundred and fifty or something, right? And that's a lot of people to try to uh, you know. That's that's unusual for people to be uh, judges of thousands. Like just getting ten. Right, 10 families. So just imagine in your local community, your local tribe, the people that you hang out with, and they know, you know, people all over the place, what a poo-poo show this Babylonian captivity government is all about with uh, whether it's Trump or Obama or Clinton or whatever, the Bush uh, crime family, whichever of these crime families that are at the head of it, they're just puppets for the international money lenders represented by Esau. And Esau hates Yah. And that's why he promotes, he has unlimited financing to finance the opposite morality of Yah. And what we want and what would be implemented immediately is Yah's morality. What happens when Yah's morality is a, a sovereign over a land? It, it ends all of this racketeering, extortion, these uh, excessive taxes and, and usury and money monopoly, all of the, the war ends. It just, and it's fast. I mean, fast, fast, like months fast, fast. Like how significantly is our life any different now, whether your hero Obama was elected or whether your hero Trump was elected. You know, it might be, you know, slightly better. However, 
the trajectory of the United States is at a nosedive. The net, you know, they 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 uh, put lipstick on a pig and make it sound like everything's awesome, but you know, they're, they're having uh, Sears and, and major retailers closing. And the whole uh, debt, uh, the massive debt is growing so much that you need like, in terms of assets, you need to have like three or four planet Earths in order to pay back these money lenders all of the usury that they're owed. It's a physical, it's a mathematic impossibility. It's a physical and mathematic impossibility to pay these guys back. Therefore, what do we do? Well, we do debt forgiveness just like our king told us to do in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will will be done. You pick the leaders. We cast lots and we allow Yah to choose. We obey his law. We use his law already given just to judge among our tribal families, which we can do immediately. You know, that we could start doing this in months. And actually, you, you know, all of the stuff that they talk about on TV, they're not talking about abolishing usury or canceling debt. They're not talking about uh, land reform. They're not talking about the restitution of all things so that we are true uh, truly offering shalom to everyone where everybody is restored of that which has been stolen from them. True restitution, opening the prisons up where uh, all the, you know, all these nonviolent crimes have been perpetrated uh, and enforced by Babylon, enslaving people uh, for promoting the cannabis of Exodus, which is a healer. Meanwhile, all the big devils running around, uh, uh, you know, with the third opium war, which is ongoing, all of this stuff ends with the implementation of Exodus government. So don't vote, cast lots for tribal government. And I want to give a couple of benefits real quick. Uh, we're going to go run with the family here in a minute. Pool season's uh, finally slowed up, so I can, uh, I'm getting back. Uh, I'm actually going tomorrow. Uh, to submit the permit. I feel bad. Sorry, like I, I've been, <laughs> I feel bad because I, I, I feel uh, very reluctant to ask permission. The problem is, is if I just open it up and put up a, a building and then all the traffic starts, all my neighbors are gonna, uh, you know, it'll just get shut down. So, uh, it doesn't seem wise to do that. <laughs> There's just, in order to make this work, I got to build so much, you know, I got to put a septic tank in up front of the property. I got to put it in a 16 by 40 building with parking spaces. That I think I could get w uh, away with. We're putting a building in and putting the, like a driveway in with some shell and stuff. So there's stuff I think I could get away with, but the big thing is uh, uh, the traffic, and I have to put bathrooms in because I, we're going to sell smoothies, and um, I need to put bathrooms in out there, and by virtue of uh, putting a septic tank in, in a, such a very obvious high traffic place, I just don't see how I get away with it, <laughs> and I need electric. That was the, really the big reason is I need, new, I've already, because I have this building that I'm in right now, plus I have a, a 2,000 square foot house, which is already on one drop. And I'm already, plus a, a, a shed, I sense there's a, a trailer with a, a, a 30 amp RV hookup to it, a 220 hookup to that. So I need new electric because I just had my well hooked up and I don't have electric to it yet, but there's a water treatment system on it. So I was going back and forth and I was going, well, I could do that, but maybe, you know, if I installed solar, but all of the solar being installed without a permit where it's in direct view of the road, it just, uh, you know, with Yah, all things are possible, but I, I just didn't seem like I would be giving myself wise counsel where it would just be ego. 
it's the same as the driver's license thing for me because I, I build pools and I drive an awful lot and I have children that I need to be responsible to. Um, so yeah, I really, I, I feel, uh, I feel sick in asking Pharaoh permission for anything. And Richard Davis, uh, I appreciate what you said here, Rick, uh, one day at a time, do what you can. And I, but I really, I feel really sick about it. I feel, I feel sick. I, my, my conscience is pierced. Um, I just don't, it, it's difficult because you're in Babylon and, uh, you know, I paid my property tax. I feel sick over that too. And, uh, but I, I still haven't filed income tax. So anyway, it's just, uh, it would be different. Like, let's say I had my whole community, like, like, like after, after I've been promoting like uh, Yah's good news, meaning for debt forgiveness and people in this community had already bought in and they were, that they were willing to go to bat for me in the same way that I'm willing to go to bat for them, meaning I'm willing to die on behalf of the, my tribe, right? This is very tribal and local. That's what it has to be because the only way our children are going to be protected is if we are willing to be living sacrifices on behalf of Yah. And because then Yah says, okay, this is my bride. My bride glorifies me. My bride, uh, they, they are my image representatives because they, in the same way that uh, Yah's son was willing to die on behalf of the father, um, <laughs> we can't wait to fall back on people. They suck. Yeah. So it's kind of like I got to kind of go big tent and then because there's going to be people that are in the church and outside of the church that there's people that are. Uh, that absolutely hate the church, but they're willing to exodus, right? Um, so in the same way that if somebody came to me, like I, I didn't wake up in the church at all. The, the church made me sick because it's so uh, bootlicking and has such terrible Stockholm syndrome and, and idolatry. So I want to kind of have like a big tent that the, the name of the, the business is going to be called the, um, the good news farm stand. That's what Yas telling me so far. So I, I actually was going back and forth uh, applying for the permit as to whether I should do everything as a church or if I should do it as a farm stand because the, the property out front is agricultural. And I think that, you know, I was looking at the benefits and I was being very rational. I was making a, a list uh, backing on each side as to what's the more shrewd decision. Because with the church, potentially there's the ability to smoke cannabis and not be prosecuted because you have a church. So there's like that aspect. And uh, because you have a re religious freedom sort of thing, which, you know, I believe I have that regardless, and ultimately Yah's going to uh, perform his will. So ultimately what I decided to do was I casted lots. So what I did is I wrote farm stand on one piece of paper, and I, I wrote uh, church on another because I was filling out the application. I just got it done about uh, you know a half hour ago or so, and I'm taking it down tomorrow. It's my birthday present uh, because... I don't observe presents. I'm going to work for Yah on my birthday. Uh, birthdays are satanic. And um, so we are to be a living sacrifice on behalf of Yah. And I think this is a good way to do it with a, a, an open door. Bring him into that building. Talk about smoothies and the good news, the scriptural good news of debt for cancellation, uh, land repatriation, self-issue currency, living tribally among our people where our families aren't broken up and, and spread all over the place, talk about mountain hours and that sort of thing, and then bring him into this structure, which is more of the church, and get deeper, deeper into the word. And <clears throat> so <clears throat> Yah's been speaking to me over the years about a way to, um, you know, simultaneously have a, a business, and this could be a seasonal business that goes basically from October to, to May, 
which is uh, a counterbalance to the pool business, which basically goes in the summer months seasonally from basically April through uh, October. So anyway, that's an aside, but uh, we can establish, this is my, uh, what Ya is telling me as to the, the best solution, the way to go on the offensive. And that's what this is all about. The, 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 the scriptural solution isn't like, oh, don't, you know, don't do it this way, do it this way, and people don't see the benefit. No, see, Yah is saying, rely upon his wisdom. By, by, it's through obedience to his wisdom which gets us out of the captivity. That's how we end debt slavery. And that will never occur. You, you, you can't, for instance, you can't have debt cancellation by voting. Why? Because you can't even question the debt. The debt. Article 14, I think it's section like two or eight in the U.S. Constitution says you're not even allowed to question the debt. Whereas Yah says, cancel the debt every seven years. Yah says, write in the Lord's prayer, forgive us our debts. That it's his will on earth for an earthly kingdom. So, okay, so the benefits of, of casting lots for tribal government is that it's fast. We, in the matter of weeks or months or a year, that quickly, far quicker, complete. We have exodus in less than a year. The biblical witness for the time that it takes to have an exodus is less than a year. From the time that Moses came, uh, came back with Aaron challenging Pharaoh, and the time the people went from captivity, where they're, they're polytheists, they crossed over into being monotheists, where they completely obeyed Yah, was less than a year. Okay, two, when that happens, now you have Exodus government. That means <clears throat> you have a replacement for uh, all of the services which are being provided by Babylon, meaning you have a, a replacement if through tribal Exodus government. We have a replacement for Social Security. We have a replacement for uh, workers' comp. You know, think of all the things that people think they need the government for. So you have like the national things like the US military and the police and, and all of that. The Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. This is the owner's manual to how to establish a tribal society, which is self-sufficient, uh, <clears throat> dependent upon only Yah and not on man's authority for anything. So under Yah's authority, under judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands, or one thousand, um, that means we can immediately drain the swamp. We can bring justice to the Rothschilds, to Rockefellers, to Hillary, to Trump, to Obama, to all these criminals. And to, to be honest with you, they, they just become irrelevant. Like, I don't really care that much about Hillary. But if that's your thing, Wherever the tribe lives that she's at, uh, somebody bring that controversy up and, uh, you know, she'll get her due diligence, her, her just rewards. But it's important to remember, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we have to give forgiveness to the debtors. We give forgiveness to the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the moneylenders. And the reason for that is that Yah wants us to have a forgiving heart and to focus on uh, bringing justice. And in reality, Yah empowered them. You know, the, the Bible isn't real big on, you know, assassinations and stuff, that sort of thing. It's, it's not, because it's important for us to remember the reason that we're in captivity is due to our own rebellion rather than placing blame on the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the Jews and the Muslims and all this stuff. Our blame needs to be pointed at ourselves so that we individually transform. We all go on our hero's journey. We all reach our, our highest potential. We, we demand to take responsibility so that that we live out Yah's mission, that we live out his story 
so that we are equipped with the, the S word, the sword of Yah. And that's why we're so effective at being judges, because when we draw Yah's morality against the Constitution, the Constitution shows that it's just sand masquerading as the rock. Just like capitalism or communism or fascism or nationalism or whatever ism that you are into, the non-aggression principle or whatever, all of these forms of humanism vaporize compared to the prophecy, the, the, the living prophecy which is being performed right now. Because if someone says, you know, what we need to do is Bitcoin and, and yada yada, right? And say, okay, well give me a historic example where Bitcoin made people free. It's not about technology, it's about humbling our hearts and transforming our hearts of stone and transforming our heart to hearts of flesh. And that's done through the cannabis anointing. Um, so that brings, okay, so I'm, I'm given different reasons why it's a good idea to use casting lots. When we cast lots for tribal government, we're establishing judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands. Uh, it's fast. We drain the swamp. There's true justice. There's immediate relief of the oppression. We don't have to, I don't have to leave my family, my, my newborn, you know, he's five months old now, uh, Caleb and uh, my three-year-old son, Christian, because by virtue of me leaving for such extended periods of time during the day, I'm teaching them to expect to be slaves. I'm teaching my own children to be slaves because I'm being a polytheist, I'm fearing and I'm obeying, not having enough money, and I'm obeying Pharaoh and Pharaoh's morality. And I'm, because I'm serving that satanic system, just like the Israelites in captivity under Pharaoh, they had to leave, they had to leave that system, <clears throat> create Exodus government, and then do those things on behalf of one another and then tithe with their flocks and their herds and their oils. And you can actually pay the tithe with the fruits of our labor, right? So we don't even need monopoly money, uh, but we still will lend money to many nations uh, just imagine have, having unlimited funding and resources to, to promote Yah's kingdom. Imagine the, the type of movies that we could create about debt forgiveness, movies about uh, land repatriation, movies about uh, the restitution of all things and the reestablishment of First Nation tribes all over the earth so that we, uh, through the reset, the, the, the Bible calls it the... Um, Oh, goodness, there's the, I always forget this word. It sounds like restitution, but it's, um, it's like when you set up a, a, a computer and you restart your computer, and uh, it's, there's restitution and, oh, gosh. Well, if you guys can, it's from Acts 2 and 3. It's actually in Acts 3. Refreshing, the times of refreshing. Uh, so it's Acts 3.19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Sinning for voting. Sinning for choosing these earthly rulers and humanism and all this nonsense that we keep doing. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the times of refresh, the presence of the Lord, restoration, the... So this, uh, in the King James, in a, a, a few verses, it talks about refreshing of, shall come, the times of refreshing, and it also talks about restitution. And restitution has a very specific uh, legal implication, meaning if you're an injured party during a theft, restitution means you get the thing returned or some substitute where you're made whole. And that uh, that's what it means to, to give shalom. So, Peace isn't just where there's the absence of war. Restitution, or shalom, I should say. Peace isn't just the, uh, uh, shalom isn't just peace in the form that it means. It's the absence of war, the absence of physical conflict. Because you can have all these people seething, seething, and angry because they've been wronged. Shalom is when you go to everybody and you validate 
their legitimate concerns where they have been stolen from and you say, uh, you know, I, on, I, I see what, what happened over these last thousand years where there's been this ongoing for thousands of thousands of years, the money lenders have been financing this war of conquest. And it says, uh, you know, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom has been under violence and the violent take it by force. They have been forcefully taking the physical kingdom and impoverishing it and enslaving it because that's what happens under humanism, under man's law and its various connotations. They did it with capitalism for the West and they did it with communism to the Eastern uh, part. Uh, you know, China and, and Russia basically took people that were living tribally self-sufficient as First Nation people and basically put them all under the uh, debt slave yoke. Well, all of that ends. So this is 4D chess and there's no, there is no violence required. So simultaneously we go on the offense and we are uniting all the races in common cause because we love all the tribes and all the tongues. We're a blessing to all of the nations. We are fulfilling the prophecy of when, when Yah comes close because we're no longer in rebellion because we're saying, Yah, you know the hearts of men. You choose through casting lots, which is in Acts 1. I should uh, read that. Uh, <clears throat> so what we do is we appoint. So if there's two people for the same position, Yah chooses. Acts 1.23. And they appointed two, Joseph called Bar Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias, all right? So there's two dudes that were nominated to replace Judas who had betrayed Jesus and sold out for 30 pieces of silver. And they prayed and said, thou Lord, who knows the hearts of all men, show us whether of these two you have chosen. Yah picks, Yah picks. When, when have you ever heard that in Babylon? Let's, just, let's let Yah choose. Because he's Yah's gonna pick anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We're the only ones deceived to think that we're in charge. <laughs> so um, uh, Acts 125, that he may take part in the ministry and the apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go his own place. 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now they had 12, one representing each of the 12 houses of Israel. Uh, Benjamin and Judah represent two houses of Israel. Collectively, that's called the house of Judah. So at one time, there was a civil war between the house of Judah and the house of Israel where they were fighting. And it was actually the Jews who uh, uh, kept the ca captivity away. That means the way you keep the captivity away is you're obedient. That means they were keeping the law longer than the house of Israel, which went into captivity first. They went into captivity first because they went into rebellion first. Uh, they, therefore, the house of Judah, the Jews, uh, they actually fought the moneylenders longer. And, and because of their fighting the moneylenders longer, they have stolen the identity of the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Um, the moneylenders are masquerading as those two now. So, okay, uh, so it's 4D chess. We do it nonviolently. We win. And um, I was uh, talking about the uh, restoration. Um, so we repent, and because we're only we're allowing Yah to, to choose, his presence, he starts dwelling among his people. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before you was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the time of the restitution of all things, which God has spoken of by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. So prophets today should be speaking of this very same time. Where the, the time where uh, we dream dreams and the old men prophesy and the young men, no, it's the old men dream dreams, they dream again. Why do they dream? Because 
Yah's government is reigning. Anything is possible. The righteous are coming to fruition. They're bearing fruit. They're shining like a mountain on a hill. All of the things that we're, uh, we're no longer salt, which has lost its savor. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, number four, fourth reason why uh, it's better to cast lots. We individually go on our hero's journey and we self-actualize. Uh, um, we reach our true potential. We have peak experiences. We get, we grow, we take on more responsibility. We stop demanding our rights like little children. Uh, rather, we become a royal priesthood and uh, obey the king. We study Torah because we have to learn how to adjudicate. When somebody brings a controversy to us, we have to know uh, the law and how it was applied and because we have to give a righteous judgment. All right, uh, number five. Uh, Exodus government, it's tribal, it's first nation. Uh, think of the American Indians again 150 years ago or even like the Amish, they're not violent, you know what I mean? Um, however, just like the ants or wasps, they, uh, they regard the land as sacred. They regard their families as sacred. You can't just come in there with some, uh, the mark of the beast money, uh, the mark of the beast control scheme and, and control what they're buying and selling because they're self-sufficient. Um, number six, uh, we reflect Yah's bride. We become the image bearers because Yah is dwelling among his people, just like he was doing in the garden or during the time of the Exodus, uh, because they're repentant. They've surrendered. They're no longer humanistic. They're, they're monotheists. They want to obey him. Uh, so Yah's bride dwells among, uh, we, sorry, we become the bride. And once we're the bride, Yah protects his bride. So we don't need the military. <laughs> we don't need the U.S. military. Number seven, Jubilee. This is good news. This is all collectively, all of these things that I'm describing, it's fast, it's nonviolent, it's effective, it's Jubilee, is justice. This, it's a time of dreaming and dancing and singing. It's a new song. It's exciting. It's it's. We're no longer impotent. We have become the head and not the tail, as it says in Deuteronomy 28. We take charge. We go on the strategic initiative, and every we, we dominate the narrative. Right now, Babylon is dominating the narrative. Everything changes, just like it says in the book uh, of Acts 17:7. Uh, those who are defying Caesar, they turn the world upside down, proclaiming another king, one Jesus. And uh, so quickly, the, just to review the seven reasons why it's better to cast lots for tribal government instead of vote. Uh, the, this is the scriptural, biblical alternative to voting. It's fast. Two, it's effective in immediately draining the swamp. Uh, three, we're playing 4D chess. Uh, four, uh, we self-actualize, we reach our, our, our highest potential, and uh, we glorify Yah uh, because we, we become his image bearers, because we, we stopped uh, being humanistic and we ended our own individual and collective rebellion. <clears throat> uh, number five, it's Exodus government. It's, so it's historically proven. This is the same methodology which was effective in the book of Exodus. They were in captivity. What do you do if you're in captivity? <laughs> Exodus, Bob Marley knew 50 years ago, used the cannabis of Exodus. Uh, we become Yah's bride. We actually use the cannabis of Exodus as part of the anointing, which is part of the marriage vow that we make with Yah to obey only him so that we have a heart of flesh, we take every thought captive in obedience to Christ, right? Number seven, that's the kind of bride that Yah wants. What kind of bride is, what kind of bride is Yah interested in? Is he interested in, in her lineage? Is he interested in what she looks like, her color? Is he in, what, what kind of bride is Yah looking for? What, is he worried about the, the physical stuff? What kind of hair color is he, you know? Or 
Uh, is he inv worried about how much money she has or how much uh, she's memorized the Bible? You know, if she's memorized the whole Bible? Or is it that she is obedient and doesn't obey Pharaoh and Caesar and Uncle Sam and Rothschild and Esau and the NFL and uh, Hollywood and Madison Avenue and all of those other forms of idolatry, Christmas, Easter, and all that other rebellion, the RCC, whatever, whatever form of idolatry, because there's the broad way is enormous for the varying forms of rebellion. We're looking for the narrow path to get into the kingdom. Number seven, we sing a new song, songs of freedom. It's the, the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. The song of Moses being the Exodus, the song of Jesus, which is uh, the good news of Jubilee. It's the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me with what? The cannabis of Exodus to preach the good news to the poor. Our job today is to preach the good news because they're not getting good news anywhere else. Our job is to preach the good news of how we can quickly and in less than a year go from captivity uh, and despair and confusion and hopelessness and debt slavery and poverty and soul stealing jobs and through a miracle created by Yah, the good news, we can transform from all that slavery, end our captivity in a matter of months, and uh, watch and uh, be part of and have the blessing of that our children are not raised in Egyptian or Babylonian captivity. So thanks for... Uh, checking the video out and, 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 and coming to watch Nick Blaine, Amanda Williams, Kathy Cap Caldwell, Richard Davis, uh, Anthony LaRocca, John Cologne, Bishop Kalbeck, uh, Kelly Mullins Upchurch, Jeffrey Mullins, Aviel Hutchins, Eric Jones, Andrew Gibson, Matthew Geary, Mark Bowler, and... Uh, so it's good. Like I, you know, it gets some more views that we're slowly, slowly growing. This is very, very organic. And from the bottom up, uh, Yah, open the hearts of your people, turn their hearts from stone to flesh. Have them take up your anointing and implement Exodus government in all of their communities. Uh, establish self-sufficient economic and political systems and uh, dominionize your earth. Take it back. Yahweh, thank you for your blessing. Yahweh, thank you for the opportunity to perform your law and your will. Hallelujah. That's all. Thanks for listening again.